Okay. Well, I've um, got chapters 18, 19, <coughs> 20, 21, and 22 on the notes here today. It'll be rolling today. <laughs> rolling today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you guys are kind of reading ahead uh, so we can kind of talk about this. It, it, it probably take a long time just to read those chapters. Uh, I'm um, I, I'm kind of getting into Genesis myself. I yeah, if you've ever taught, you know always if you learn a little more, you always learn more than your students. Do. Absolutely. And uh, it's been a blessing to me uh, to get into Genesis because I'm I'm looking at some of these passages a little more closely than I ever did before. You know, I've I've read them all before, but. It always amazes me you go back and read the, the same thing over years later and you get a completely different perspective on it. It's, just, it's really something about the Bible. It opens your eyes so, so well. Uh, well, <clears throat> chapter 18. Uh, the... Uh, <coughs> Abraham is visited. Uh, he's <clears throat> sitting uh, under the great trees of Mamre, sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. It's too hot to be out working, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> sitting there at the entrance to his tent, he looks up and there are three men standing by. Come by. Uh, and uh, it's interesting uh, uh, the revelation of the hospitality that Abraham shows his men. Uh, he hurried to the entrance of his tent. I guess he, he must have been sitting right inside. And, uh, and then he sees them and he hurries to the entrance. He, he bows low to the ground as, as if he's presenting himself as their servant to... Uh, to do for them whatever they would like done, whatever they need done. Uh, he calls them, uh, my Lord. Uh, if there is, um, um, but he doesn't, doesn't use the plural. Interesting. He calls them my Lord. Uh, and he encourages them, don't pass by. You know, don't, you know, you're, you're, passing through, please stop, please, please stop, <clears throat> and uh, let a little water be brought. The first thing is bring some water so you can wash your feet. Remember Jesus in the Gospel of John and at the Last Supper, you know, none of the disciples are going to wash feet, but Abraham says, Let, let's wash your feet and refresh you. Uh, let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed. Uh, so they said they agreed. Yeah, well, thank you very much. <laughs> so, so Abraham hurried. He hurried into the tent. It says, "Quick," he said, "Quick to Sarah, get the flour and knead it and bake some bread." Uh, then he selected a choice calf, gave it to the servant to butcher it and prepare it. He brought some curds and milk. Uh, he set those before the men, and uh, he stood near them says here, like a, like a, a, sir, a, a waiter, oh, can I get you anything, would you like to need some bread, uh, do you need an extra cut of, <laughs> of, uh, of beef, whatever. Bob, there's one, one thing here that I, I, I found this amazing, you know when he talked about she went in to get the flour and there's a note in my translation, the amount she got was 36 pounds. They were going to do some bacon. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't catch yeah. that. Oh, yeah. He, he really fixed a big meal. 36 pounds. He, he butchered, he butchered a, lot a whole of calf. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, uh, half a day, an all day or half a day of fairy who has to butcher <clears> and cook it. And, and oh, she yeah. has to feed <clears> the bread. Uh, <clears> and, 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 uh, three seals, yes. The footnote says about 20 quarts, 
about 22 liters or 20 quarts of flour. She had a lot of servants to make bread for too. You know, yeah, three, three, three quarts. That's a lot of flour. Yeah, so they had, they had a big dinner. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, uh, they, uh, they asked him about his wife. Where's your wife, Sarah? They're in the tent. Now, <clears throat> notice verse 10. Then the Lord said, <coughs> Have you noticed that the Lord is in capital letters? That's not a word. That doesn't mean Sir Lord, like when Abraham addressed them as Lord. This is, this is the word for Yahweh. Right. Then Yahweh said, I will surely return to you about the this time next week. So, and Sarah will have <clears throat> a son. Before, you know, there had just been a kind of a general prediction. Sometime, you know, you will have a son. Sarah will bear you a son. But now it's, specific. he's getting specific. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I've got a note here that um, if you're, if you think looking at these three men, <clears throat> it looks like two of them are called angels or messengers. And the third seems to be the Lord Himself. Verses 10 and verse 13. Uh, <clears throat> and then the Lord, capital L O R D. I think previously we had, we had seen um, a reference to the angel of the Lord. Some people think the, this appearance of the of the angel who, who speaks, who is called the Lord himself here, who is called uh, Yahweh, is a, a manifestation of uh, the Son of God, of Christ, before his birth in Bethlehem. That's a speculation. But uh, God does appear and speaks and, uh, and, and throughout these verses here I've indicated 7, 20, 22, 26, and 32. The Lord speaks. Yahweh is speaking to Abraham. He's talking to Abraham. Well, um, Sarah heard this um, this uh, prediction here that, or the prophecy that she was going to have a son, and she was already old, well advanced in years, well past the age of childbirth. <coughs> She laughed. She laughed to herself. Said that she didn't laugh out loud, <laughs> but she, she smiled to herself. After I'm worn out and my master is old, but I now have this this pleasure. <laughs> can I can I enjoy sex again? <laughs> this advanced stage. I think she's saying that as well as say, can I have a son next at my advanced stage? And, uh, and the Lord said, why did, why did Sarah laugh? Uh, is anything too hard for the Lord? <laughs> What's she laughing at? Do you think this is too hard? <laughs> kind of a tease. It's almost like teasing him about uh, their, uh, their lack of faith. Uh, why would you smile at that? Uh, so uh, Sarah was afraid, so she lied. <laughs> she said, I did not laugh, but the angel said, yes, you did. <laughs> you may have laughed to yourself, but I knew it. <laughs> Later on, she did laugh again after Isaac was born. But that was seem to be the laughter of, of real joy. And then the, the last of this chapter is, is taken up with a conversation. <clears throat> uh, you might call it a negotiation regarding God's plans for the Sodom. The wicked city of Sodom. Uh, the uh, in verse 17. The Lord said, "Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do?" Yahweh said, speaking to Abraham. Um, and um, so um, he told him that the, the, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great; their sin is so grievous. And he was going to go down and see if it was as bad as, as he had heard. Um, so the men turned away and went 
Here it's pure. <coughs> there's still three of them. One of them speaks of, as Yahweh, the Lord. And the men turned away towards Sodom. But Abraham remains standing before the Lord. And then he starts negotiating. Question. Why, why would Abraham care? Wicked city. Was he thinking about Lot and his family who was there? Maybe. Could be. Yeah. yeah. Um, he said to the Lord, Well, if there are 50 people, you wouldn't wipe them out if there are 50 people, would you? There. And the Lord says, No. Uh, and um, if I find 50 people, I'll spare the place. So Abraham spoke up again. What, what if the number is uh, five less? If it's 45, would you would you save it for 45? <laughs> and the, the Lord says, no, well, no, I'd save it for 45. Then he says, how about like 40? like a car dealer at Illo. <laughs> and he says, what about, what about 30? And then, what, well, what about 20? This this is the most amazing story of, you know, you know, that Abraham, somebody says Abraham's trying to Jew the Lord down. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is where the Jewish people get their sharp sense of uh, negotiation, <laughs> of money management. And finally he says, may the Lord not be angry. It's like Abraham realizes he's, he's really pushing it here. He's pushing his uh, luck a little bit, going a little bit on the verge of going too far. Please don't be angry for the sake of ten. And the Lord said, if there were ten there, I wouldn't destroy it. But that was the end of the negotiation. Uh, they didn't find Why didn't he go down to night five, maybe? <laughs> well, uh, one thought is that ten is the number required for uh, a righteous assembly, for a synagogue, right? That would be the bare minimum. But anyway, it stops at ten. And <clears throat> the story continues then in verse chapter 19 and verse 1 the two angels now the Lord is not among them the third one who's been speaking to Abraham threatening to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah but the two other messengers the two other angels the two men that were with him uh, and that uh, had dinner with him they arrived at Sodom in the evening <clears throat> and uh, there's a kind of a parallel or a contrast. Uh, Lot is sitting at the gate of the city. <clears throat> the two men, <clears throat> when they arrived, Abraham was sitting at uh, his tent flap, wasn't it? <laughs> Here's the difference. Abraham's in a tent. Lot's in a big city. He's sitting in the gate of the city, at the city square, where all kinds of business is negotiated. And if, there's, uh, if there are legal problems, if somebody's got a suit to bring against somebody, they do it and they go to the city square and the elders of the city hear the case and make their decisions. <clears throat> so uh, apparently Lot is, is kind of a, one of the prominent citizens. You know. <clears throat> He's sitting there in the city square uh, as um, one of those people who will be making decisions about business or witnessing business transactions or legal disputes. And uh, he asked them to also turn aside to your servant's house. He offers them hospitality. He, say, he says, you can wash your feet. <laughs> uh, uh, it appears that Abraham offered to wash their feet. And uh, they said, no, we'll just spend the night in the square. But he insisted strongly. <clears throat> and he prepared a meal. He made bread without yeast. He didn't even bother to, to uh, make a nice uh, bread, that was just flat bread without any yeast. Uh, and uh, doesn't mention that he had any meat to go with it either. Just <laughs> bread and water. And then uh, uh, these men surround the city. Uh, 
but they both said, so bring them out so we can have sex with them. And uh, it says that all the men from every part of the city were there. Apparently, this is not just a, a small group of degenerates, you know. We've all, you know, every every place has got a few bad apples, but this this emphasizes that all the men from every part of the city is <coughs> like, you know. <laughs> here's here's some virgin, here's some fresh meat come into town. Come on, boys, we're going to have a party. Oh boy! Uh, and uh, and Lot went outside to meet them, begged them to, to leave. Don't do this. And what does he do? He offers them his two daughters. Right. <clears throat> I don't know what to say about that. You, anybody got a comment about that? I just can't believe it. Why would yeah. he do that? Why would he do that? Yeah. Didn't like him or something? Maybe he thought he was ugly? Or <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see Why much did worse. Why did he say he's ugly? They ugly daughters. Which is horrible too. Just even think that. I'm sorry. But was that but his uh, way of protecting uh, the they, men? They, they were the they strangers. Apparently they wanted, uh, they wanted men, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. They males, they didn't want females. Um, and uh, it, mm, they said, "You came here as a, this fellow came here as an alien and a stranger. Who do you think you are now, uh, uh, crossing us?" And so they were pushing on. They were about to push, uh, you know, knock the door down. And, uh, and do you? Ha they said, "Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law or sons, <laughs> who belongs to you? Get them out of here." <coughs> Well, the two men said this. The two angels now said, "You need, you need to get out. It's time to leave." Uh, and uh, so, Lot went out and spoke to his. There's some question here about is his sons-in-law are are just men who were already engaged. But anyway, he says to them and to his daughters and to his wife to hurry. The city is going to be punished. And uh, when he hesitated. The men grasp his hand. Lot, Lot is hesitant to leave, and they have to grab him. They have to drag him out. Lot does not <coughs> want to leave this wicked city, does he? Uh, and they have to drag him out. <coughs> and uh, and then he says uh, in verse 19, uh, "I can't flee to the mountains. <laughs> this staff." <laughs> I, I can't go up to the mountains and the hills. I can't live there. That's that's I, that's the kind of life I'm I'm not used to. I'm too soft. I couldn't survive up there. Uh, he, he says, "Look in verse twenty. Verse twenty. Look, there's a town here. Let let me go settle in this town. Let me flee to it. It's small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared." And uh, the angel said to him, very well, I will grant this request to you. I will not overthrow the town you speak of. <coughs> but you better get there quick, because I can't do anything until you reach it. I'm not going to destroy Sodom. <coughs> That's why the town is called Zoar. Um, that is mean, mean small, it's a small place. So by the time Zoar reached there, the sun had risen over the land early morning and then the Lord <coughs> rained down sulfur from Sodom and Gomorrah out of the heavens overthrew the cities of the plain and uh, verse 26 Lot's wife looked back she became a pillar of salt she's still looking back yeah um, they found pillars of salt out yeah. there in the lake or something and in verse 27 it says Abraham uh, or verse 28, and look down towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's wife is looking back, and he's looking down on the smoke of the, of the cities of their destruction. The, uh, the last part of this chapter uh, is um, rated 
X, so we're not going to look at it. This is not fit for public consumption, <coughs> right? Which part's rated X? Beginning at verse 30, and we get through the end of the chapters. <coughs> <clears throat> he and his two daughters were living in a cave. They ended up, apparently they did leave this little town and went to the mountains, living in a cave, and somehow or other they felt like they were the only ones left on the earth, and so they needed to uh, reproduce, to have some kind of descendant. So uh, they got their daddy drunk and went into him, and uh, there were two children born, one one um, was called Moab, and the other was called ben -Ami. And the uh, father of the Moabites and the, and the father of the Ammonites of today. <clears throat> Verse uh, 38. The, uh, <clears throat> when, it, when is today? He is the father of the Ammonites of today. What does today mean? Currently. Well, yeah. it doesn't mean no. It doesn't mean no, uh, 2021. When this was written, I assume. Yeah, when whoever's writing yeah, it right. says. Yeah, yeah. Whoever's writing it. Okay. All right, we're doing good. <laughs> Do y'all have any question about this? This incest, 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 incest sounds a lot like incest. a day. So you won't lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, they don't just sit around in the town square standing on a rape of rape boys or whatever they got. You know, what do you got? Yeah. Okay, chapter 20. Yeah. There's an encounter again with, it, with Abimelech. We're not. This is the Abimelech that we've already heard about earlier. Uh, no, this is another Abimelech. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> and uh, uh, he was in a place called Gerar, chapter 20 and verse 2. And uh, here he passes off Sarah again as his sister. And Gerar sent for Sarah and took her. He actually um, actually brought her in to, uh, as a concubine or whatever, I guess. Um, what do you what do you make of Abraham passing his wife off like it was his sister? Well, she, she was must have been a gorgeous woman. Yeah, and I, be very although precious. although at this stage she is an old woman. <laughs> Older woman, yeah. <laughs> She's old. past childbearing age. Oh yeah. But. Uh, well, well, they, uh, what I, from what I've read, she technically was his sister, but she was also his wife. I mean, well, look at verse twelve. She, he said, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, though not of my mother. Right, half sister. She was a half sister. Half sister. Yeah. Uh, but still, he had taken her as his wife, sure. and uh, he was willing for somebody else to have her, so they, <clears throat> he wouldn't be so he wouldn't uh, be executed. Uh, executed, <laughs> but, uh, and uh, Chapter is that in? I'm sorry. Chapter 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. <coughs> Don't say you have to keep, keep up can. now. Uh, God, but God had uh, revealed to Abimelech that uh, Sarah uh, was his wife. And, and actually in verse 7 it said Abraham was a prophet. It speaks of Abraham as a prophet. And, and he said Abraham will pray for you. If you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all yours will die. So Abimelech called Abraham in and uh, asked him what he had done and why he had done it. And Abraham gives this excuse in verse 11 and 12. 
there's no fear of God in this place and they'll kill me because of my wife. They'll keep me to take her. And she really is my sister, he said. <coughs> um, and um, when God had, had me wander from my father's household, verse 13, I said to her, this is how you can show your love to me. <laughs> if, you, if you want to love me, just tell everybody I'm your brother. <laughs> if people, anybody got an eye for you, <laughs> just just tell them that. Don't tell them you're married. Just say <clears throat> that we're brothers. You lied, I'll swear to it. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, the, the, uh, the Bible doesn't depict any of the uh, characters in the Bible except Jesus. That's perfect. Uh oh, no, that's all true. That's true. They show them all as all that. Yeah. Uh, all have faults, just like all the rest of us. The warts. Yeah. 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 Uh, all have stories. Uh, so, uh, so Abimelech uh, apparently was concerned about God's punishment <coughs> for him, and he actually uh, was very kind to Abraham. Gave him sheep. Goats and mm -hmm. animals. And said, uh, verse 15, my land is before you to live, live wherever you like. You, In other words, this whole territory that I'm a ruler of, feel free to settle down anywhere you want to. And he said to Sarah, I'm going to give your brother a thousand shekels of silver to cover the offense against you. So Abimelech uh, is is really repentant. He comes off here as a much better character in a way than Abraham, doesn't he? <clears throat> Abraham lied to him. He took his wife. Yeah. And he figures he is a fan of Abraham. Yeah, he's paying off Abraham. I mean, you know, yeah. it should be the other way around. And look at verse 17 and 18, the end of the chapter. Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech. What does it mean he healed him? His wife and his son slave girls so they could have children again. Apparently the people of that town, including uh, Abimelech's wife and maybe even Abimelech himself, were infertile. For the Lord had closed up every womb in Abimelech's household because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. Uh, the, uh, um, I've got a All because here. of Abraham. All because of Abraham. So they were all on the back page of their notes here, verse mm -hmm. 17. They're all bearing themselves so Sarah left. Right? This this might explain how God saved Sarah to become, from becoming pregnant by Abimelech after he had taken her. It says he had taken her, and the implication is that you know, he slept with her. Uh, but uh, this this statement here about everybody being infertile. Uh, assures us that Isaac could not be considered the offspring of a union with the Abimelech. Maybe it's a kind of indirect way of saying Abimelech could not have been Isaac's father. Oh, yeah. So now we get to the birth of Isaac in uh, chapter 21. And the exile of Hagar and Ishmael. <clears throat> Well, we read verses 1 through uh, 7. I'll do it. <clears throat> okay, read it there, Sam. Now the Lord, the birth of Isaac. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I am born a son in his old age. This, um, the word uh, uh, 
Isaac. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you Good doing? Good, Good to see you. Uh, and this, you know, uh, this keeps coming up uh, 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 about the laughter. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. She laughed when she first heard it, and now she laughs again, and she names him laughter. That, um, and I think there's something here about the way we understand the gospel we'll itself. Soda for you. Does anybody oh, want more coffee? I'm good. All right. How about everybody else? That <clears throat> the, the very idea, the very thought of what God is doing for us should evoke a sense I have coffee. of... Yeah. Oh, sorry. The, First of all, the impossibility mm -hmm. Thank you. that God could redeem this world, that could redeem us, and that there is hope for us, and that there is a possibility of life after death, mm -hmm. but ultimately, of course, fulfilled in the resurrection, that all of this is so ridiculous, so, so beyond imagination, you know, what's the only proper response to this? Laughter. <laughs> Laughter. <laughs> you know, if it doesn't put a smile on your face, you know, maybe you don't really understand it. You know, I think we take this so much for granted, it's hard to, to see how ridiculous it is what God is doing that he would... Uh, bring this about to understand that so I think the word Isaac we need to kind of think of ourselves as children of Isaac or Isaac's family or maybe maybe we need to have an Isaac fraternity <laughs> okay well uh, verses 8 and following uh, are I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Um, we've got this problem again because this grew out of Sarah's thought, you know, that they were going to help God. She, it was her idea really to bring Hagar for mm -hmm. Abraham to have a child, right? Yep. But uh, uh, in verse 9, we see that Sarah saw that the son <coughs> whom Hagar, the, the Egyptian, born to Abraham was mocking. She was mocking her. And uh, in a sense, kind of making fun of her that an old woman like her would have a child. And so she said to him, We've got to get, get rid of that slave woman, <clears throat> for she's not going to share any inheritance with my son Isaac. <clears throat> and Abraham is, but is distressed because of Isaac, I mean, because of Ishmael. After all, Ishmael is his son. Right. And in a sense, been taken. Hagar, she becomes and is actually called his wife. She be, she became uh, on a level. It was just like she was some harlot uh, legally to take her that way. Uh, but God has mercy on him and he makes a promise that he will go ahead and do what Sarah tells you to do because I will, I will make a great nation of Ishmael. So uh, he sends them away, and God uh, heard, um, uh, heard uh, the boy crying, and they were out in the desert, and, uh, and uh, the Lord uh, opened her eyes, gave her water, and as he grew up, uh, his mother got a wife from him out of Egypt. But the but, uh, Lord... Uh, it's clear here that God has mercy on this child who's born. And uh, he'd made a promise earlier that he would make a great nation out of Israel. <clears throat> now, uh, verses 22 and following, we have a treaty between Abimelech and Abraham. Abimelech... Um, said to Abraham, God is with you in everything you do. 
apparently he had noticed that Abraham was prospering. Uh, uh, his, uh, his animals were multiplying. His herds, he was spreading out. And that God was blessing him. And <clears throat> the, uh, we're what, the thought I think here in Abimelech is, you know, the way this guy is, is taking over, he could, he could take the whole land. I've, I offered the land to him, you know, to go take whatever he needed. He could settle down anywhere he wanted to. But now he is prospering, so maybe maybe we need to have an agreement about, about you can take this, but, but I, you know, I need some guarantee that something's going to be left for me. So he, <clears throat> he makes this, uh, this uh, treaty with him. And he says in verse 23, Swear to me that you will not deal falsely with me or my children and my descendants. Swear you're not going to take advantage of us. And show me and the country where you're living as an alien. <clears throat> and Abraham swore. And, <clears throat> and uh, they brought sheep. And they made a treaty. And... Uh, they swore an oath there that Abraham would not take an advantage of, of Abimelech. And Abraham now settles down at, at Beersheba. Now, I want to, uh, chapter 22, I think, has a lot of theological significance. I want to make sure we got to that. <coughs> Um, you got verse chapter 22, everybody on chapter 22 now. Yep. Read verses 1 and 2 here. Now it came about, he says, after these things, that God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, he said, and he said, here I am. And he said, take now your son, this is your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and he says, and go to the land of Mark. He says, and offer him there as a burnt offering. He says, on one of the mountains of which I have, uh, I will tell you. Okay. Keep going. Um, now let's stop and look, look a little bit at that. <clears throat> Abraham has uh, believed God's promise, right? Chapter 15. He believed. When God told him he would multiply his seed, he obeyed God's command. When God spoke to him originally, he got up and left his country. But now God is going to really test his faith, he says. Uh, and um, what a test it is. Take your son Isaac, take him to a mountain, I'll show you, and offer him as a burnt offering. <clears throat> Do you want to test that would be? Especially yeah. in that period of time, they knew but, what a burnt offering was. But so. it's a think about it. He's actually telling him uh, that um, if uh, if he obeys God's command, that would result in the nullification of his promise to him. I wonder what. I, 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 how did Abraham think about that? He was willing to do it, apparently. We read, you know, that they left, they got up to the mountain. Uh, we won't. Uh, and, uh, but he had enough faith in the he Lord. He got the wood. He had enough faith in the Lord that he knew that the Lord, even if he took the power of life, would somehow restore it or whatever. He, I mean, he had to, had to believe that. Uh, look over at Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. <clears throat> Bob, do you, you can, can you find that for us? Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. <clears throat> 
he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so, in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. Yeah. Well, the author of Hebrews says that this is his thinking. <laughs> if I kill Isaac, I believe God is that will keep his promise, and to keep his promise, he would have to raise him from the dead. Right. Mm-hmm. But I believe that, mm-hmm. if that's what it takes. Yeah. Well, uh, that's real faith, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. First of all, faith that he would have a child in his old age, and that God would do all these things for him. And then, secondly, that he could even sacrifice his son that God would raise him from the dead. That's a lot of faith. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's go over to verses 15, uh, 15 through 18. Do you have that, uh, Mike? Yeah. Um, then the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your son. Indeed, I will greatly bless you and will greatly multiply your seed. As the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is on the seashore and on and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all their nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham turned to his men and they rose and went together to Beersheba and Abraham lived in Beersheba. Okay. This is the angel of the Lord speaking, by the way. It was the angel of the Lord that told him, uh, don't lay your, don't lay a hand on the boy. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the chapter begins that God tested him and God said to him, but then when we get over to the time where he's on the mountain, it doesn't say God spoke to him, it says the angel of the Lord, right. doesn't it? <clears throat> but now he's saying, he says, I swear, <coughs> because you've done this, I will bless you. I swear. Now, people swear on uh, on their mother's grave, or they swear on the Bible. They swear on something uh, that's of, of great value or, or something higher than themselves, don't they? Uh, and now God swears. <laughs> so swearing is is a matter of taking an oath right. based upon uh, something of honor. So, so what? So what is God going to swear by? Himself. I swear by myself. <laughs> and the man the choice. <laughs> Which is a way of saying, may my name, may my name, be mud. May, may my name be worthless. Right. But this does not happen. Right. I'm putting my whole reputation to, at, at stake here. Mm-hmm. If, if this does not happen, my name is worthless. Right. That's what God is saying. If this doesn't happen, wow, is, is that a guarantee or not? Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Look at, uh, and I have, uh, I've got, I've just quoted this because I, I wanted to get this in here for sure. From uh, verse, on the, on the bottom of the page there, Hebrews 6, 13 through 20. When God <coughs> made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, you know, what do you swear by? Swear by the temple? Swear by your mother's honor? Swear by the Bible? <laughs> he has to swear by something greater than himself, and now, now all he can do is swear by himself. Right. I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. So after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. 
People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said, puts an end to all argument, right? Uh, you, can't, you can't do any more than just, I swear on something. Take an oath. We do that, you know, in, in court. When we talk about perjuring ourselves, if you, if you tell an officer something, let's say you've, you've had an accident, and you tell an officer something that's not true, you tell a lie. Can you be accused of perjury? Sure. Yeah. You can? Oh, if you tell an officer for uh, officer. Oh, you haven't sworn. Oh, sorry, yeah. Let's say you, t you tell the officer, I was, I was only going 20 mile an hour when you were going 60. <coughs> Can you be uh, charged with perjury? Oh, stupidity, well, maybe. It's <laughs> lying to an officer. You can't be charged with perjury. No. Let's suppose you're you going to court, court right. and you swear, swear to, yeah. that I was only going 20. And uh, then they bring in evidence from the radar gun, you're going 60. Well, first of all, you've broken a traffic law. But you could also be charged with perjury, couldn't you? I don't think so. Yeah, lying uh, under yeah. oath. I'm not right. Right. Under oath. You could have uh, been lying, but I don't think they would press it. They would just throw oh, sure. the book at you. So why does God do this? Why does God yeah. go to, why does God start swearing? Look at verse seventeen. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it. He's trying to make it clear to the <coughs> heirs. And who are the heirs? Israel. That's all of us. All right. The seed yeah. of Abraham. The seed of Abraham through Christ. He wants to make it clear. Right. He's trying to tell us something, right. isn't he? Right. Uh, and again, this is... <laughs> if, if the creator of heaven and earth, if he says something, shouldn't that be enough? Well... But we're so dense, and we're so unbelieving, and we're so stupid, right? But God says, let, let, I want to make it clear to you. Please, I want you to understand that there are about two unchangeable things in which it's impossible for God to lie. Verse 18. Uh, what are the two unchangeable things? I guess that's the reputation <clears throat> of God. I don't know what the other thing is. Mm. But <clears throat> we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us, we may be greatly encouraged. Greatly encouraged. Is this an encouragement to you guys? That God wants to have mercy on you. That He intends to do this. We have this hope as an anchor. It's an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our full honor Jesus has entered. He has become a high priest forever. So it, you know, this is the anchor of our soul. That the fulfillment of this promise, God's mercy to us, is now fulfilled, of course, in Jesus, who is the, who is the descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and fulfills all the promises that were made. And uh, he is now actually entered into the temple in heaven, sits at, at a high priest on the right hand of God. So, is that enough for us? <laughs> what else do you need yeah, to what believe? Else <laughs> when you get discouraged, do you need more? What else can God do, right? <clears throat> Paul says in Romans, if God yeah, spared not his own son, Abraham. That's pretty... if God spared not his own son, which in a sense, you see, he didn't spare, like he didn't spare Isaac. If, if, he wasn't, if God didn't spare his own son, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? What more encouragement? What more guarantee do you need? Hmm. Well, this this chapter, uh, uh, this uh, this conference, what I call the now the oath is confirmed, promise in chapter fifteen, um, 
it was uh, ratif- or promised in chapter 12, ratified in chapter 15, where there was a ceremonial ritual where there's a sacrifice, fire flashed between the, the uh, carcasses of some sac- sacrificial animals, signified in circumcision, and now confirmed by the oath of God. The final, the final verses there uh, sets the stage for the, the, the story in chapter 23 about the uh, uh, search for a, a wife for Isaac. Uh, it gives a genealogy here uh, for Rebekah. Rebekah was the daughter of Bethuel, who was the son of Nahor, Abraham's brother. So she was kind of a, what was she? Would she be a second cousin? cousin yeah, second cousin. Uh, uh, well, uh, did it anybody else have their family? <laughs> <laughs> must be, uh, there must be somebody <laughs> in the world. Yeah, there weren't that many people. Well, I'm trying to plow through this and, and, and trying to. Uh, you know, trying to hit the high points, especially those that are, are really significant for our understanding of the gospel and, and the whole story of Scripture. What is uh, the Bible? All the Bible is the Word of God, and it's profitable for instruction in righteousness. Right, all of it. But but there's some parts that are more. I, I look at it like a whole hub of a wheel. There is the central part, the, the, the crux of the matter. And, and then then there are parts way out here on the periphery <coughs> that are not so central to the main theme of Scripture. 